Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So uh, we're going to have a look at day two of Goodwood. Um, we've also got a couple of Go a couple of Galway that I quite like as well, um, including one in the feature race. The was it the Galway Plate or tomorrow? Yes, it is it's the Galway Plate. So let's start off looking at the 150 at Goodwood, and the horse that I'm uh, quite keen on here is the this one here, French Duke. Um, where's the hood for the first time? And Wathnan Racing haven't really been missing with their, their purchases. Um, they purchased French Duke after he finished second at Newbury in a maiden behind Hossam. Then went to Ascot and he ran okay, to be fair. He finished sixth in a decent handicap behind going the distance. Um, in front of horses like Chantilly, Poneros, Persica, Gilded Water. All horses that I quite I think are, are, are quite useful themselves. Gallantly, another one for Aidan O'Brien. Um and if you watch the race, William Buick just could not get him to settle. He was far too keen throughout the race. He just would not settle. Um, just seeing, well, why was James Doyle not on? Not sure. Um, would not settle for most of the race. Then he ended up being caught out wide, um, uh, you know, for a long way. And he was clear, um, you know, he had a clear run, but that actually meant he just pulled himself to the front too soon. And William was at pains to try and stop him and restrain him, and he kept trying to pull him back. And it, you know, he was still trying to restrain the horse turning into the straight because he thought, I can't go just yet. And because of all that restraining, I, th I think he he was then unable to pick up at a crucial time. He did actually, you know, he still went forward and nearly nearly hit the front. Um, but just faded late on. Interesting to see William Buick. I kind of felt he dropped his hands towards the end of that race, to be honest. Um, when he realised he wasn't going to win the race. They've put the hood on. Hopefully he can settle. Um, if they can settle him out the back uh, under James Doyle, then, you know, he was rated 88 and he went off 10-1 to 1 for a decent handicap. This is, I think this is marginally easier than what he ran in at Royal Ascot. So straight away, um, you have to give him a, a chance. And then the fact that, I think there's there's a few things we can overcome here. Um, the the keenness he can get him covered up a bit longer. Um, uh, yeah, I'm quite hopeful of a big run to be honest from French Duke. I think, um, as I said, Wathnan Racing haven't really been missing. Um, when they buy a horse, they get it right pretty much uh, most of the time. And I'm uh, I'm hoping that they've got another one here. Just they didn't win at Royal Ascot, but they can go and win at Goodwood instead. That is French Duke, who is currently available, as you can see, at 5 to 1. 11 to 2 being the outlier, so we don't mention that. Or we don't use that. Second race um, is the 225 at Goodwood. There we go, that looks better. Uh, it is the Group 3 for Phillies and Mayors. And the horse that I like here is the 3-year-old Jabara. Yes, she is favourite. I think she's the right favourite as well. Three runs ago, she was a very good winner, beating Pinafore. Now, as you know, if you follow my videos, I'm quite keen on Pinafore, to be fair. And, and back in third was Soprano, and Soprano obviously went to uh, Royal Ascot afterwards um, and franked that form by winning the Sandringham Stakes. Now, and to, to be fair, Soprano's ran two good races since as well. Um, Pinafore, I do think, is still well handicapped up to 93. I think they can find a race for that horse very soon. Actually, he's not rated 93. He's now up to 100. Uh, she's up to 100 after finishing second there um, behind Jabara. Jabara went on from that, uh, went to Carlisle um, for a listed race. Comfortable winner. I thought she won it pretty cosily, to be honest, beating Key to Kotai. She went off 6-4 to four that day. Um, and, you know, that kind of showed that she's better than listed level for sure. She then ran in a group one. And I thought this was a huge effort. She ran in the Falmouth um, for three-year-olds and older horses. She finished second. She chased home Porta Fortuna at Newmarket. That was a really good effort. Um, obviously, Porta Fortuna had previously won the Combination Stakes uh, and finished second to El Malka in the Guineas. You know, that form is proper group one form. If Jabara is actually proper group one form. She should have no problems dispatching these. Um, and she is the right favourite. But he is, she is the one that I want to, to be on here. I think a lot of these are listed group three horses. Whereas Jabara has the potential to be much better than that. Um, and you can currently get, let's have a look. 
what price is Jabara? She's 11 to 4. I think she should be a little bit shorter than that, to be honest. I think she should be sub 2 to 1. Um, because I think her form is that much better than her rivals. Um, and I don't think it was a fluke last time out, finishing second in that group one behind Porta Fortuna. Whereas I don't think any of these others could have done that. Moving on to the three o'clock at Goodwood. Um, the Malcolm Stakes group three for two-year-olds over five furlongs. And it's a bit of a boring selection, but it's Asterius. I highlighted Asterius uh, when finishing fifth at Ascot, um, beaten by shareholder Tropical Storm, Arizona Blaze and Whistlejacket. I felt um, Asterius was not, not ridden to win the race, but was ridden like um, we think shareholders are a better one. We're not going to try and beat shareholder. And, you know, to be fair, that was still in a group two. Dropped back to a listed company, went to Sandown, and we did put uh, Asterius up and was a very comfortable winner, um, beating It Ain't Two. Rated 101. I can see why. I think this is the best horse in the race. I think it's. I think Asterius is better than um, Group 3 class. I think he's probably Group 2, Group 1. He just needs to be ridden on merit, whereas I think with no other Wathnan racing horses in this race, I do think he'll be ridden on merit. And um, hopefully this is a second winner of the day for James Doyle uh, for Wathan Racing. Let's have a look at the odds. Very short, or not very short to be honest, five to two. But I think that's fair. I think a lot of the others are, they're good two-year-olds, but they're not going to go on to bigger and better things. Whereas I think Asterius can go back up to bigger and better things, to be honest. Moving on to the 335. Now, a little bit disappointing, uh, potentially, that Rosalian is out. I think Rosalian or Rosalian would have won this. Um, I think this now means the reason I say that is we were on Henry Longfellow last time out, and I thought the jockey gave Henry Longfellow a perfect ride, and yet was still beaten by Rosalian. I think Rosalian demonstrated that probably the best um, miler, three-year-old miler around at the moment. I think the second best is Henry Longfellow. And I think he will confirm form with Notable Speech. Now, I don't think Notable Speech is going to finish right out of the back as uh, he did last time. But I do think the Ascot form, the St. James's Palace Stakes form, is about right. I would just move Notable Speech up a little bit closer. But I don't think Notable Speech is going to be good enough to beat Henry Longfellow. Um, Henry Longfellow's done nothing wrong. It all went wrong in, in France. But other than that, his form has been very, very good. Um, and yeah, he was just beaten by a, a top class Rosalian last time out, but they were three lengths clear of third. Um, if they re opposed, I would personally, I think I would go every time Rosalian, but the fact that Rosalian's been pulled out, uh, we get to stick with Henry Longfellow and hopefully he can take all the beating at six to four. Notable speech, you're, you're backing on the basis that he might bounce back, and the other three shouldn't be good enough, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping the three-year-olds come to the fore and Henry Longfellow can out-battle uh, Notable Speech. Moving on, we're getting through these relatively quickly. Um, moving on to the 410 at Goodwood. The Phillies handicap over just shy of a mile and two um, for three-year-olds and older. And the one that I'm going to give a bit of a chance to, I'm going to take a chance kind of on true wisdom on the basis that last time out was not his running her running sorry this is a Phillies race uh, Phillies and Mayors race um, yeah the fact that that was not her running she went off 7-2 favourite for a race over course and distance um, actually, actually it was slightly further it was over a mile and a half and she she did look like she didn't stay um, she was there she travelled okay against older horses and just did not pick up late on. They've dropped her back in trip, and I'm hoping that's key to her. I think um, her effort at Kempton over a mile and three, when the all-weather I always knock a couple of furlongs off, particularly uh, around mile and three, I would say it's about a mile and one race. True Wisdom only got beat by going the distance that day. Obviously, going the distance then went on to Royal Ascot and won the King George the Fifth Stakes, the Heritage Handicap, off a £7 higher mark. Well, True Wisdom was running off 82 when beaten by going the distance. Granted, comfortably beaten by going the distance. 
but True Wisdom gets to run her off just a pound higher mark. If they ran again in the all-weather race, True Wisdom would probably get a bit closer to going the distance. Um, and this is this doesn't feature a going the distance, in my opinion. I'm hoping that last time out, just things didn't go to plan. They are dropping back in trip. The Johnstons always used to have a good record at this um, meeting, to be fair, as well. So I'm hoping that, um, yeah, the drop back in trip may be uh, key. But the fact that it went a favourite last time, and yet tomorrow we're going to get a reasonable price. What, 4.10? We are going to get... 15 to 2. Went off 7 to 2 last time out for a similar, if not harder race in my opinion. Um, returns here at a much bigger price. 15 to 2. 7 to 1 available comfortably. Um, I'm hoping True Wisdom can run a big race here for Joe Fanning. One to go at Goodwood. Um, and to be honest, this is one I'm, I'm really quite keen on to be fair. And he's a big price. And it is He's not a big price. Mum's Tipple. Let's have a look at the price of Mum's Tipple. I've tipped up my Mum's Tipple a couple of times and he he's getting well supported now. He's sevens. Um, the key to Mum's Tipple might be that he needs further now. If we actually look at his seven furlong form, his recent runs of a seven furlong, he finished second to Mount Athos on the all-weather um, back in March. He disappointed the run before that, finishing sixth of six. But they were coming off marks of 104 and 102. L keep going back, seven furlongs, fifth of sixth off 106 in a listed race. One at Chelmsford in a handicap of 102. Uh, seven furlong, seven. Second, Escobar in a heritage handicap of 99. Runs here of 91. Could be very, very well handicapped. And did even run in this race uh, a couple of years ago. Um, finished fourth. Not beaten that far off 92. So returns here off 91. Um, yeah, and, and was a bit too keen that day. Went off the 92 joint favour. I think he should be around that sort of price again, to be honest. If he's not as keen, you know, he's had a lot more run races since then. So hopefully he's not as keen. I think he will go very close here um, in the race that he, he finished fourth in a few years ago. Currently, as I said, you can get sevens about him. You can get 15 to two just about. Um, wouldn't surprise me if he went off much shorter. I would expect to see the horse go second favourite behind misinformation, personally. Um, yeah, I'm quite keen on that one, and I, I think it might be one of my uh, three for the nap competition. In actual fact, let's do our naps before we finish with the last two at Galway. Um, just having a quick read through. I really like Jabara. I think Jabara should be my nap. I think Henry Longfellow is going to be my next best. And yeah, we're going to do Mum's Tipple as my third best. So they will be my three for tomorrow. Away from uh, Goodwood, we go to Galway. And there's a race at six o'clock that I'm interested in. A Mare's Handicap Hurdle. And it's again, it's a horse that we've been on before. Um, that is the very disappointing, recently, Glan. Look at his form recently. It really is poo. Um, pulled up. Nowhere, nowhere. Pulled up in the Galway Hurdle uh, in August 2023. So this time last year was going a four to one favourite for the Galway Hurdle. This season, the horse is running in a mare's handicap hurdle and the forecast price is 25 to one. I think that's mental. I know the last couple of runs, the horse has also gone off big prices, but they were in listed handicap hurdle and a listed handicap hurdle. Went off 25 to one and 50 to one. Rated 135 and 134. Now down to 133. Back in this type of company, I think that's key here. It could certainly bounce back here. Peter takes a useful 7 off, so is effectively running off 127. Um, yeah, I just feel that... I mean, it, we look at his, his run when he ran in the Galway Hurdle the year before that. Finished 4th off a mark of 130. But that was the Galway hurdle. In a clearly a much easier race, could certainly bounce back. And that twenty-five to one forecast price really catches my eye. Let's just see if anyone has priced up that race yet. It is the six o'clock at Galway. Typically, no one has. Thanks very much. And let's load up the next race as well. Um, 
but yeah, if we can get anywhere around there, you, you know what? I think double figures is fine about Glenn. Anything above 10 to 1. Um, as I said, I think it's a much easier race than what she has been running in. Um, dropped in a handicap. Things didn't go, quite go to plan. I think the ground will really suit as well. The good ground. Um, the faster the ground, the better, in my opinion, for this horse. Um, and obviously came into the, the Galway hurdle last year off the back of a couple of wins at Listol and Roscommon. One at Listol off 127. Yes, Danny took another seven off. Um, but yeah, she looks so progressive then. I just can't believe she's lost all of her form in just three runs. Clearly something went wrong in the um, Galway hurdle and she might just have taken a little while to get back. This could have been where they've been aiming her. We'll go and get a win at the Galway uh, Festival instead. Um, yeah, Glenn definitely catches my eye there. And the final one we want to talk about is in the Galway uh, hurdle itself. The 710 is 2 miles 6. The Galway plate, sorry, not the Galway hurdle. The uh, Galway plate. And I'm going to go for what I believe is the classiest horse in the race in Zana here right down the bottom here Jack Kennedy's chosen to ride that one over all of the other Gordon Elliott um, runners and to be fair Zana here's form is fine um, has been beaten by really good horses this year finished second to Factor File nothing wrong with that finished second to Bob Ollinger beating a length in a hurdle race nothing wrong with that uh, fourth to Tierpoo in a Grade One, beaten by Tierpoo, Imperio Pass, and Ashro Diamond. Nothing wrong with that. Um, beat Aspire Tower in a beginner's chase. Very good form. Last couple of runs went to Cheltenham for the Grade One Turner Novices Chase. Finished fourth. Again, nothing wrong with that. Decent effort in a in a graded race. And then last time out, finished fifth, um, albeit well beaten in the Grade One Willow Warm Gold Cup just isn't good enough for that sort of level but dropping back into handicap handicap company i think he could be very interesting to be honest i'm um, just having a look to see if he's ever run at galway he's never run at galway um so we can't uh, look into that but some of his form is top quality not beaten that far really by the likes of state man constitution hill bob ollinger um even as i said his fall at cheltenham was a very good effort and, and interestingly, the handicapper has gone from 150, well, running an island in the, the grade one hurdle uh, at the beginning of the season in December, ran off 156 over hurdles, runs here off 145 over fences. Um, the handicapper dropped him three pounds for his disappointing effort in the gold cup, the grade one. This is not a grade one. This is a handicap. And yeah, off 10-11 for Zana here. I think that's a very, very interesting mark. And he's one that I'm quite keen to have a go on tomorrow and he is currently available at 12s you can just about get 12s about Zana here so they are my selections for tomorrow uh, let's have a quick recap French Duke I think uh, back with James on board um, he was too keen last time his second the time before that does read very good the trip should be fine and if he can if the hood helps as well I think he is going to run a really big race Jabara, who's going to be my nap. I think her form is Group 1, Group 2 class. I don't think any of the others are up to that level. Uh, Asterius, running on his own merit, I think um, is a Group 3 horse at least. Whereas again, I think some of the others are good two-year-olds, but not going to go on to bigger and better things. Henry Longfellow, if Rosalian had been running, I think Rosalian would have beaten Henry Longfellow. But I think Henry Longfellow will confirm the places with notable speech. A true wisdom to bounce back for a disappointing effort. They dropped back in trip. Um, she went a favourite last time. She's a bit of a bigger price this time. That's interesting. Mum's tipple. Back over seven furlongs I think is key. Um, down to a mark now that he can certainly get involved in. Glan definitely uh, dropped significantly in the handicap. Down to a mark that she can definitely get involved. And this is an easier race than what she has been running in. And finally, Zana here over this trip, two miles six, um, I think is is fine. And yeah, back out of graded company. Last time out was last seen in running in graded races. I don't know the last time it even ran in a handicap. I'm just going to quickly check that to see if it's ever run in a handicap. Uh, beginner, beginner, grade one, grade two. Nope, nope. No, just graded races for ages, hasn't it? 
back into a handicap could be very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, do get involved in the NAP competition. Great to see some new members finding us via these YouTube videos. And also great to see some new players in the NAP competition. As I've mentioned before, if you are a new member, get in, get in touch. Um, we can probably give you a free upgrade for a few days. Um, and if you're an old member, if you're a, a, you know, a long-term member and you've never really had a trial of rating the races, send me a message. Um, I will know if you've had a trial, um, but send me a message uh, and I will have a look to see if I can give you a free upgrade uh, for a few days.